السلام علیکم ناظرین آپ کے ساتھ دوبارہ سے آپ کی خدمت میں موجود ہے ہنا جنیجو آپ کی سہیلی آپ کی دوست سہیلی پروگرام کے ساتھ جو کہ ہم ایوری منڈے چلایا کرتے ہیں بٹوین فائیو ٹو سکس پی ایم ناظرین آج کا جو ہمارا ٹاپک ہے وہ بہت ہی بینیفیشل ٹاپک ہے آپ جانتے ہیں کہ جس طرح سے ہماری کمیونٹی میں ہماری بہنوں کا جو رول ہے ہماری خواتین کا ہماری ماؤں کا جو رول ہے وہ ایک گلو کی طرح سے ہے کہ وہ پورے گھر کے افراد کو پورے ہاؤس ہولڈ کو اکٹھا کر کے رکھتی ہیں اور جوڑ کے رکھتی ہیں اور اسی طرح سے جو ہماری جنریشن ہے جو ہماری یوتھ ہے وہ بھی بہت امپورٹنس رکھتی ہے ہماری زندگی میں کیونکہ ہمارا آج کا جو جنریشن ہے یہ کل کی فیوچر بنیں گے یہ ہمارے کل کے ڈاکٹرز انجینئرز بنیں گے سائنٹسٹ بنیں گے نیورو سائنٹسٹ بنیں گے اور ہماری کمیونٹی کو ڈیولپ کرنے میں ہماری مدد دیں گے اسی حوالے سے آج کل دیکھتے ہیں ہم جس طرح سے کہ پیرنٹس بہت ہی پریشان ہوتے ہیں کہ ہمیں کس طرح سے اپنے بچوں کو ڈیولپ کرنا چاہیے کس طرح سے کس رستے پہ ہمیں ان کو گامزن کرنا چاہیے پروموٹ اور انکریج کرنا چاہیے کہ تاکہ ان کی جو لائف سکلز ہیں نہ صرف وہ ڈیولپ ہوں بلکہ ان کی کوالیفیکیشن بھی ڈیولپ ہوں تو جب کوالیفیکیشن کی بات آتی ہے تو ہمیں پتا ہے کہ یہاں پر بے تحاشا بہترین اسکولز اور کالجز اینڈ یونیورسٹیز جو ہیں وہ اوپن ہیں جہاں پہ ہمارے بچے آرام سے جا کے تعلیم حاصل کر سکتے ہیں مگر جب بات آتی ہے ان کی لائف سکلز ڈیولپ کرنے کی تو آج ہم یہ جاننے کی کوشش کریں گے کہ کیا کچھ ایسے ادارے موجود ہیں ہمارے پاس انگلینڈ میں اور گلوبلی کہ جو کہ ہمارے ینگ ایڈلٹ کی لائف سکلز ڈیولپ کرنے پہ فوکسڈ ہیں ان کو امپاور کرنے میں فوکسڈ ہیں اور ہماری خواتین کو بھی امپاورمنٹ کرنے پہ امپاور کرنے کے لیے فوکسڈ ہیں جیسا کہ آپ جانتے ہیں بوتھ دا رولز ایکسٹریملی امپورٹنٹ اینڈ گو ان ہینڈ ان ہینڈ سو ان شاء اللہ ود آؤٹ فردر اڈیو وی ول اسٹارٹ ود آور ٹو ڈیز پروگرام اینڈ دا ٹاپک فار ٹو ڈیز پروگرام از ینگ ایڈلٹس اینڈ ویمنس امپاورمنٹ وائلس پروموٹنگ دا میسج آف پیس اینڈ ہارمنی ان ٹرمز آف ڈیولپنگ دا کمیونٹی سو لیٹس ویلکم آور فرسٹ گیسٹ اسپیکر مسٹر رابن مارش Welcome. Hello. Hello, Robin. Hello. How are you, Robin? Great to have you on board, Robin. Thank you very much for inviting us. You're welcome. You're welcome anytime. So, Robin, um, I'm just going to quickly introduce you and then we're going to watch the video just to explain the agenda of UPF or the vision of UPF, if you like. As soon as the video comes to an end, we'll take you back on board again, right? Jean Azri, so Robin Marsh um, is the Secretary General for UPF, Universal Peace Federation for UK. Robin has been involved in human rights campaigns, interfaith activities, sustainable development goals, and empowerment of women and young adults. He and the Universal Peace Federation team have been expanding the UK Foundation by over a re regular program of events and many partnerships. So without further ado, welcome on board, Robin. So now, Robin, sure. um, we'll quickly put the video on just so that everybody benefits and has a deep understanding of what kind of initiatives is the Universal Peace Federation involved in. Since its founding, the Universal Peace Federation has been deeply committed to building a world of peace. Thanks to the hard work of our international chapters and our partners, our presence and impact have continued to grow and develop. This movement that the UPF has tried to put together in various nations, various regions, various continents, has now gained tremendous ground. The UPF's International Leadership Conferences continue to inspire prominent figures with the Founders' vision of one family under God. We hold seminars on good governance, human rights, character education, and the importance of spiritual values. Thanking the sponsors, uh, Universal Peace Federation, for putting together this uh, really very, uh, very important uh, conference. Universal Peace Federation is a committed, indefatigable and steadfast friend of the United Nations and an advocate for family values. 
The four main areas of UPF's work are interfaith dialogue, strengthening marriage and family, education, and service. In each of these areas, we aim to support and supplement the work of the United Nations and create networks of peace builders from all walks of life. In the past year, UPF carried out thousands of programs in over 100 nations, many of them in support of the United Nations mission. We are grateful that the region took upon themselves to celebrate and to augment the work of the United Nations. You see women from Africa, from Asia, from Europe, uh, the United States, from all over the world coming together, having the same goal, the same ideas that we can make a difference. UPF also organized a series of educational programs in support of strong marriages and healthy families, including a Family Day partnership with the United Nations Office of the Family. In addition to our work as an NGO at the United Nations, we are working closely with the African Union. Each year in New York, we organize celebrations of Africa Day, and our chapters around the world organize their own programs. I thank you very much, Universal Peace Federation, on this very happy Africa Day. Let us rededicate ourselves to our partnership in the pursuit of peace and progress for all Africa's people. To mark the anniversary of the UPF Founders' Call for the creation of an Interfaith Council at the United Nations, UPF held a series of consultations on this issue. Liberals and fundamentalists in all three faiths must build bridges and attempt to avoid future confrontations. An interreligious council at the UN could assist them by holding conferences, workshops, etc. designed to reduce tensions. Interaction with religious leaders is very full of love and heart and a desire to inherit the rich tradition and to cooperate, collaborate into doing something great. Our Office of Peace and Security is addressing the interplay between hard power approaches to peace and soft power approaches that involve civil society, faith-based organizations, and track two diplomacy. I worked in the UN for more than 30 years to see such a large effort from the grassroots to support the UN. I feel that to reach peace, it is possible in my lifetime. They are calling each of us to look deep within ourselves, to reflect upon the world situation and how UPF can continue to be that agent of change that the world so desperately needs. Hey, welcome back, Robin. Oh, thank you. That was a fantastic video, a very holistic video. Yes, it's true. It's uh, it's a big vision. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, Robin, let's take the first question from you. Uh, what is the vision of Universal Peace Federation and what are its main objectives and activities locally? and globally, if you'd like to touch upon that, please. Main vision is this sense of humanity being one family, that we are one human family. We have many different branches, we have many different colors and shapes and sizes and clothes and so many di dis differences, but that brings a richness and a vibrancy to life. And we believe that the divine source, divine spirit, our God, our Creator, our Allah, whatever name we apply is, is common and not a point of divergence, but bringing us together. And the closer we are to that divine source, then the closer we are also to each other. So the, the role of interfaith and the, the role of uh, inclusiveness of, of the different perspectives of different faiths, it helps us to, to understand also our Creator better. Right. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So in terms of its main activities, uh, you know, when it comes to young adults and women empowerment, um, if you'd like to expand a bit more on that, please. So Margaret will, will talk quite extensively, I think, about uh, about young people. But I think the, the role of encouragement of, of uh, 
giving the legacy of, of what we've gained onto the next generation is, is wonderful. And also to pick up and to support those who are not as appreciated by our current society and cultural values compared to what God's vision is. So in a sense, to see from, uh, to try to see from the creator's viewpoint and to appreciate each other's value as, as God's child, whether I come from a, a group which is not so empowered or not so appreciated in the world at this point or is suffering from some issue. For example, we did a lot of work with conflict minerals with uh, the Congo. So uh, Congolese women were suffering because th that was the, the worst place in the world to be, to be a woman, uh, was the, the eastern part of Congo. Uh, human rights violations, rape as a weapon of war, so much suffering was going on. So to highlight those injustices and to bring those awareness of those injustices in the UK Parliament, in the European Parliament, uh, also in our own venues, that was a long-term campaign and a very rewarding one because we have somehow through that feel the, the pain of also of God within those, those situations. So uh, I believe uh, the sense of humanity being one family is that, that we take upon each other's difficulties and problems as family members and support and help each other to, to right those wrongs and those injustices. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree with that, Robin. Thank you so very much to, you know, um, um, be able to share the vision of uh, UPF. And also, it's it's lovely to see your passion, how you've come a long way, you know, with UPF and you've been proactively involved with so many different activities and initiatives uh, that help mm. bond people together, help people come together, regardless of the fact, whatever ethnicity, race they come from, whatever they, mm. which, whichever faith that they belong to. It's really wonderful to see how people like yourselves are proactively, uh, you know, coming together to help people become inclusive with each other and just come together to support each other for the greater good. Thank you so much for coming on board today. Um, Jean Aldrin, now we are going to the next guest speaker. Ki taraf chalte hai. So our next guest speaker for today is Margaret Ali. Again, she is the director for Universal Peace Federation and is tremendously passionate about spreading the message of peace and harmony. She values diversity of culture, ethnicity, and different faiths. And she brings people together and provides them an equal platform to express their views on any given topic so they feel heard, they feel special, regardless of who they are, where they come from, as long as there is a message of peace and coherence underpinning their own message. Margaret's particular passion lies in empowering young people and women. So with, without further ado, let's welcome Margaret on board. Hello and welcome, Margaret. Hello. How are you, Hina? I'm good. Thanks. Very well. How are you? Good. I'm ready to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, let's, take, let's take the bull by the horn then. <laughs> right. So the first question for you, Margaret, would be, can you please share some information about the Young Achievers Award that has been in place for 12 long years? And um, the fact that the kids are awarded at the Houses of Parliament, you know, for their community service. So wh what an appreciation, you know, what an achievement for them. Would you like to share something about that, please? Yes, It's a definitely. great opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, yes, definitely. I think in UPF uh, and also in Women's Federation, we really want to appreciate the good things that young people do. The reason being that they don't have such a good, uh, if you like, uh, uh, good uh, reputation, you know. So therefore, we extensively ask our ambassadors for peace and our, our um, friends to recommend people that they know are working in in the field so we started this long time ago but now it has been our greatest pleasure uh, regarding the work uh, the, the actual the um work that uh, 
we do is choose people who have done things well beyond their capacity, I mean, their, their duty, their school, their, their, their home. They really are helping community, college, whatever, whatever they're doing to, to actually help them. Have, they have a result to show. I must say, one of the most inspiring things uh, that people see is these young people talking about their work. They have five minutes to explain their work. I'm so sorry. That's fine, yeah. Okay, I'm yeah, so, so you were saying um, we've got... They have, they have five minutes to explain their work, but we've already vetted them. Uh, the, the key point is that um, uh, not only do they, do they receive something, but they give so much back to us, joy and knowing that such people exist. I mean, um, the fact that ambassadors, for, I mean, uh, parliamentarians come to give a reward, uh, an award to their constituents is a very good thing. Number one, they get a surprise that there's such young people exist, but number two, the young person probably sees his MP for the first time. I mean, the age gap is between maybe, on the lowest we've had is 16 uh, until, 26, 29, 30 even, because they are still working for the goodness of, of mankind. Now, what happens is uh, they give they, they their award and they're so energized that we started thinking that they asked us, why don't we work together afterwards? So that became a beautiful tradition. Of course, it requires a lot of hard work. It requires a lot of calling and bringing and doing things together, but the result is so rewarding. Uh, because um, young people by themselves, uh, with our help and Robin and I, and uh, also our Birmingham uh, group really helps us a lot as well in this area, because we have lots of good young people in Birmingham. Uh, we, we bring, we actually give them a safe atmosphere where they can work together and encourage them to stay altruistic, to keep doing things they ought to do. And they by themselves they picked up um, mental health um, situation in young people that's doubled, trebled, quadrupled even uh, during the last uh, decade, uh, maybe more. But now with the COVID, it's even worse. So they did a special project by themselves and actually made a, a recommendation to do a petition. And the petition was, was um, received by government and they gave us a response which was very appropriate, very adequate. So this was a great thing. And then all the people that have some they haven't talked much about their mental health situation. They started talking why they found a good, safe atmosphere by their peers and by ourselves. So this is very important. Now, recently, uh, they decided to speak out because of COVID situation to kind of tell us what they did during this COVID time, what they learned. Is there something good or bad? And they did extremely well. Uh, and, and it was a very good event, I would say. Um, but within that, what is the worst thing that happened to, or to, three, to two or three people is the racial issue that Black Lives Matter or, yeah. yeah uh, and, and then they, they really talked about it and it touched our hearts. So they suggested that we do a follow-up meeting, which we'll have next, uh, next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Uh, it is uh, for racial harmony. Uh, creating harmony between religions, races, everything is, is our job. Uh, to bring them together. I think whatever UPF does, what, what it does best is bringing people together. And these people meet each other, they learn from us, from, they learn from each other, and they start working together. Now that is the victory. The victory is not that UPF is the greatest. The victory is that UPF can make this happen. And, and, and it is very, very good and very, very important. And, um, uh, and now we're having um, another uh, kind of proposal uh, for the youth things, they're, they're really excellent, excellent uh, programs. So please, if uh, your your audience knows of people who have done great works in London, uh, or I'm sorry, in England or Britain, United Kingdom, uh, they're most welcome to recommend. We do it almost, um, if not almost every year, but except this year. But this year we we'll probably may do it later because Parliament is closed. But the beauty is that Parliament and parliamentarians come. One anecdote I want to tell you is. The um, deputy, um, deputy, um, uh, what is it, uh, Mr. McDonough is, is the deputy um, exchequer yeah, of, of uh, Britain. 
uh, for, not deputy, but uh, shadow. He said he's very busy. He, he can just come and give the award for the, uh, and then she has to leave. He stayed all the time, from end to end. It was amazing. And he, he also he also had to testify. When, I don't know, in Birmingham, you would have known very well our friend and also Patricia and uh, David's friend uh, and our patron, uh, Lord Tarsam King. He actually said the best thing that UPF does is this. Of course, it's because he cares for young people. But he also was very keen, uh, you know, listening to everything that they're saying because it is invigorating, encouraging, and at the same time, it gives us hope that we have good young people in this world. Yeah. Absolutely. So Absolutely. At the, sec the second point, did you want me to say anything else about women? Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, Margaret, is there any set criteria for the young adults to qualify to move on to yes. this uh, achievement scheme? Yes, they, they, um, they have to, the, the people who recommend them, they have to write something to say why they think this person can take this award. But then the, the, the person involved, the young, the, the young candidate or awardee, nominee, has to write down everything he has done. In, in his young life, yeah, uh, where he did, what he did, etc. And this is to do something beyond themselves. It's not just for their own family or even for their own uh, tribe or for their own, uh, but it must be for their community, it must be for their nation, it must be for more than that, you know, even people that went abroad and, and helped people. So it must be something that is well beyond their sense of duty or or their, their everyday everyday thing to do it, and uh, please come and you will really appreciate what what i mean but after that we have more than the required number of people we will choose the best people and every time i'm very sad if somebody is left out because they're all very very good candidates okay. yeah and then after that it's the more they work with us the more they become senior you know young achievers or they do work. For example, uh, the one after also one of the um, young achievers that uh, is um, is helping us now to do special meetings that he knows about hackathon and things like that, which will take place on the racial harmony on Tuesday evening as well. Uh, so therefore, they they set themselves up as people that can be useful not only to society to their work but to us as well. So it's very very good. Yeah. Uh, I don't know excellent, if. Uh, excellent. So I'm just yeah. going to translate that quickly for our viewers, um, if you permit me. You know, just just sure. uh, half a second. Ji Nazreen, so this way that Margaret ne bhi aap se taskara kiya ki Universal Peace Federation jo hai, wo hamari youth ki skills development ke liye ek Young Achievers Award ke naam se program chalate hain har saal, aur wo encourage kar rahe hain ki hamari jo younger generation hai, wo samne aaye they need to come forward and participate in such initiatives so that they get an all-rounded approach and get the feel of what it feels like to you know uh, develop yourself um specifically aisi jagah mein ke jahan pe bacche mukhtalif mumalik se ikatthe hote hain mukhtalif ethnicities ke bacche aa rahe hain mukhtalif cultures ke mukhtalif religions ke bacche ikatthe hote hain ek dusre se aake milte hain seekhte hain aur phir lifelong friendships banate hain aur phir aage chalte hain ek dusre ke sath interact karte hue ek healthy competition ko lekar aage chalte hain so, बच्चों के लिए जब उनको ये अवार्ड्स मिलते हैं स्पेसिफिकली पार्लियामेंट हाउस में जब पार्लियामेंटेरियंस आके उनको ये एजाज देते हैं उनकी सेंस ऑफ अचीवमेंट जो है वो बढ़ जाती है उनकी उनको सेलिब्रेट करते हैं आके इंपॉर्टेंट लोग तो जाहिर सी बात है कि उनकी जो इंट्रेंसिक मोटिवेशन है वो बहुत ज्यादा बूस्ट होती है एंड देन दैट देन बिकम्स लाइक अ फाउंडेशन और अ स्टेपिंग स्टोन फॉर देम टू देन प्रूव देमसेल्व्स एंड यू नो कीप पुशिंग देमसेल्व्स फॉरवर्ड अचीविंग देयर हायर गोल्स इन लाइफ तो दोबारा से इंशाल्लाह मार्गरेट से जो है वो हम अपनी गुफ्तगु जारी रखेंगे सो ओवर टू यू अगेन मार्गरेट अम इन रेफरेंस टू वुमेन एंपावरमेंट यू हैव बीन सेलिब्रेटिंग two major events un international women's day and un international day uh, of violence elimination against women so mm -hmm. what is the objective of celebrating these two big events um basically uh, i think we bring together people from 
various cultures is true, but also at the same time from grassroots and from top even parliamentarians that, that show what women have achieved or what can they can achieve and advise the public in general how to actually make women get into politics to step the other. And they, they really encourage from top to bottom, everybody's there being elevated. So people can see, can, can, can also tell that, oh, I must also do this. I'll give you an example. Robin reminded me that there was a woman that came to this event, young woman. Uh, she came to this event uh, many years ago. And years later, he, she wrote to us and said that she changed her major from uh, whatever it was to politics because he wanted, she wanted to know if she could make a difference in politics as a woman. It's wonderful, isn't it? Even this one news that we heard, it's great, but I'm sure there's many things like that happen. But the, uh, the other thing that uh, we want to do is to bring in, in uh, elimination of violence against women, we bring all different parties that are involved in this. Different people speak about how they help, etc. Now, many people know people in, in trouble, but then they can go back and say, look, I know somebody who does this, and here is his number, and help. And, and it is very important that women don't forget who they are. We are women of dignity. Now our Women's Federation is doing uh, dignity seminars, for example. But we are women of, and we are people of dignity. We have to keep our dignity. We cannot just look at people who are being you know, abused and uh, treated badly by their people, by whoever. It, it's not on. We have to say, finally, a full stop. There must come a time where we have, will have enough force of people that can bring that full stop issue that was with child, with children, to not torture or abuse children full stop. We should do the same for women. As you know, in our event, it came up. So it's all very important. It's not just talking. It's bringing people together, making things together. For example, we have a partner, which you know, I think, uh, that is helping a lot of uh, of uh, domestic violence uh, victims. So we work with them, we give them a safe place to work and we give them people that can give them coaching, etc. I've even recommended you, you know. So therefore it's very important, it's very important that we become catalysts and uh, facilitator of people getting the need that they have, they need to have. Absolutely. The things that they need. So, I mean, but next time maybe we can talk more if I'm bringing this such interested parties to your program about the main issue of domestic violence, it would be good. Definitely, yeah. Margaret. Definitely. Because being women, I feel as though it's not only our, you know, it's not only due diligence, I feel as though it's our responsibility, specifically for women like myself, you know, who, who is a survivor. I have been in a domestic DV, you know, environment for 12 long years. So people like ourselves need to come forward and support, help and support other women come out of it easily as well. Because what matters is at that point in time, the entire focus of that woman goes towards the experience that she, that she's going through and she can't think through how she can you know lift herself back up and move on in life so she's literally not thinking about the possibilities and the probabilities mm -hmm. and the fact that if one door closes many other opportunities many other mm -hmm. doors are going to open up for them mm -hmm. so people like ourselves who are out there working as a preventive mechanism you know um need to perhaps be more available for this cause to go and, you know, play full out and contribute and be able to give back to the community Absolutely. and, you know, help these women that, hey, I've been in a similar situation and this, this and this is what I did, you know, to bounce back on the surface. And okay. obviously not saying that one person's, you know, problem would be everybody's problem. Each person's mm -hmm. challenge or problem is unique to them. But similarly, one person's solution may not be the best fit for everybody. However, how would you know whether it works? Spoke it doesn't unless you don't try it you know so it's our responsibility absolutely to go play full out you know be out there and create a momentum create a movement of these solid strong women out there empowered women who are there to you know educate the next generation as i was mentioning earlier on to our viewers that women are like glue for the entire household 
you know they, right. they bring the whole household together and they're basically nourishing wise gerunds for them to then go out in the community and develop the rest of the people and help each other regardless mm. of the fact which ethnicity which background they come mm. from so on that note thank you so much margaret for thank all you. the beneficial information that you've shared you. with us so now we will go to our third guest speaker. Ki janet uh, our third guest speaker for today is Mr. David Earl. Uh, welcome on board, David. Nice to be here. Thank you, Hina. You're welcome. So David is the Director for Universal Peace Federation for the Midlands region in UK. David is particularly active and involved in interfaith cooperation activities and has a keen interest in values and character education. Wow. Um, as one of the ways of community development, David has organized a number of youth services locally and internationally. So let's welcome David. Hey, David, <laughs> back over to you now. So let's take the first question. David, um, I'm curious to know, would you like to share uh, a bit about your passion for interfaith activities um, that you're rolling out and promoting the agenda of peace and interfaith and harmony. Mm. Well, it's um, it's a big area and it's um, a fascinating area, and particularly in some of our sort of Western uh, cities like London, Birmingham, where we have uh, the whole world, you know, gathered together. I feel it's a, it's a very uh, beautiful kind of project to uh, or area to get involved in um, for some of the reasons that Robin and Margaret have already um, talked about uh, building um, better community relations uh, both in a positive sense and also when we encounter difficulties you know uh, problems then we're better in a better position because we have those community relations to tackle them so that things don't spiral out of control or we you know revert to type and start looking at each other with uh, fear or prejudice so i like interfaith work for that reason but also i like interfaith especially with young people because there's an element of the unknown uh when you bring together people from different cultures different faith backgrounds and so on you never quite know uh how it's going to go no matter how much you plan say I, i've planned youth projects I like that element of the unknown and also in a positive sense uh, often there's a kind of a divine intervention or a divine spark things will happen that you have no idea were going to happen especially with young people um, I like that element it's like the the sum is greater than the the parts uh, the whole is greater than the, than the parts because there's this kind of um, divine element it's like a, an anointing you know when people come together for a good purpose uh, so I've experienced that so many times with young people. Uh, amazing things have happened beyond the project that you planned, you know, mm -hmm. with the young people, mm -hmm. with the consequences of that project. It's, it's amazing. So, um, yeah, that's partly why I'm involved in that and also particularly with young people because they are energetic, they're dynamic, they're open, they want to do something, they want to get their hands dirty and they're open to learn and become, you know, leaders of the future. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, agreed, hundred percent. So then, um, along the lines of values and character education, I know that you know you're keen to educate children and help them understand their uh, higher purpose and their values. What What is the yeah. process of um, educating them along those lines? I guess there's two ways. There's the kind of more academic side of character education. We have a, a wonderful character education curriculum which is being used in different parts of the world uh, so oh, for example you know, um, I think it was yeah, beginning of 2018 I went to Senegal and um, UPF uh, co-hosted together with President Macky Sall and the Senegalese government an amazing uh, convention where we brought representatives from 50 African nations uh, ministers of state, ministers of education, and we presented and uh, showed them our character education curriculum, which is online, 
and then they have to, had the opportunity to study it and go back to their countries and see if they would like to actually use it in their respective nations. So I found myself speaking on a panel with the um, State Minister of Education from Nigeria, the Deputy Minister of Education from Lesotho, and uh, literally the whole of Africa was there at the, the highest level. Uh, so that's one way, more the academic side, but then the, the service projects we have uh, allow young people to learn by doing something, uh, by coming together, uh, trying to do something for the public good, the youth projects that we have, it's called Religious Youth Service, then it has two kind of main purposes. One is to do something for the public good, to build a park or um, a nature trail or something for the local community. But then in the process, the young people become like brothers and sisters, uh, as Robin was alluding to earlier. You know, they, they connect mm -hmm. at a deeper level than just their skin color or their ethnicity or religious background. They literally become like brothers and sisters. And it's such an empowering experience that they feel, well, if I can do this here, say in Birmingham, I can go back and do it in Pakistan or you know Japan or wherever I've come from. It's just, it has a multiplying effect. That's also what I love about this kind of work, especially with young people. Yeah. So education, more theoretical, but also the practical, both important. Yeah, so basically a rounded off approach and also setting precedence that if they've been, you know, churned through a specific process before, they know what it takes to uh, come out on the other side of the uh, fence. Mm. Then if they've been able to do it here, wherever they go in the entire world, they can do it again and keep on sowing the seeds of productivity and progression for uh, yeah. everybody out there whilst they're setting examples. Excellent. That, yeah. That's a great initiative, David. Thank you for sharing that information. And if, you know, um, if somebody wants to join in, you know, become a part of these activities, uh, where can they find you? How can they find you? Um, if they connect with um, ourselves or Robin or Margaret in London, uh, also on our website, we publicize things on the UPF uh, website internationally and, and nationally. Then uh, if a project is coming up and we can let young people know where it is. Of course, now with the lockdown, it's a little bit different scenario. Um, uh, but these projects have taken place since 1985, several hundred all over the world. And I'm sure we'll be doing a lot more. Uh, so um, when they become, when we get up and running again, if people want to know them, they can connect to us and we can let them know. Okay, okay, cool. Excellent. All right. Thank you, David. Thanks again. Right. right. Um, so, viewers, our fourth guest speaker for today is Patricia Earl. Patricia is the Women's Coordinator for Women's Federation for World Peace since 1993. She is also the founder of Women's Peace Meeting, which started in 1993. And I have personally attended these meetings and have really enjoyed the element of diversity. Uh, the fact that, you know, it's such an open, safe, non-judgmental space. With uh, the last time when I attended, I remember there were women from, you know, um, over 30 odd countries together under the same roof. And it was just so beautiful to see, you know, everybody connecting at a deeper level with each other. Each one of them had something common to another and it, it was just, you know, the case of connecting and then continuing for the rest of their lives. I mean, I'm, uh, uh, you know, connected to most of them and how many meetings have I attended so far, you know, so we've come a long way and we're synergizing and complementing each other. You know, and all of them are very, very actively pursuing their passions in life. And I think that's the common ground between um, the most of us. So, um, yeah. Um, Right. OK, so <clears throat> what basically Patricia is doing, uh, she's inviting women from all walks of life in that peace meeting. They come together and rejoice and celebrate their identities, their wins and their losses, which, of course, are learning lessons for everybody. Uh, David and Patricia, as you can see, make an adorable couple and a great team together. Uh, they promote peace and interfaith activities. And um, over to you, Patricia. <laughs> what would you like to talk about in <laughs> women empowerment and your peace meetings with them? Yeah, thank you so much, Lina, for inviting us. Yeah, 
it's just very, very humbling to be here to be able to share about our work. Yeah, it's true when you see if my husband wasn't there, I wouldn't be able to do the work I'm doing, really. It's really my support. Because in fact, I'm not such a confident person. I'm not, even to talk like that, I feel very nervous. <laughs> but uh, I love to talk about the peace meeting because I feel it's such a long journey we've been doing. It began in, in, you know, in 1992, there was a conflict in Bosnia, a terrible conflict. And uh, at that time, our Women's Federation, which is a sister organization of the UPF, the Universal Peace Federation, so we have different, diff uh, similar aims, but more apply for women. And in 1992, there was this conflict in Bosnia, and women from all over Europe decided to pray for peace in Bosnia. And uh, I opened my house for the first time, you know, and I invited a few friends and we joined that chain of prayer. And after 40 days, something happened. And I think the neighboring country began to help. And I just felt in my heart, you know, the power, you know, of women prayer for women and, and young people and children victim of war. And that's what motivated me and gave the, me the passion to begin that women peace group. So we've been doing it for how many, 27 years. Mm. And uh, in the wow. beginning, Facebook, we would meet every month, you know, on the 21st of each month, because the 21st of September is the day for peace. So we adopt that day. And only the last few years, uh, we met every six weeks because we become quite a big group. You know, we can be sometimes 120 women coming together from across race, culture, nationality, faith, non-faith, for peace. And in the beginning, it was more ecumenical. It became interface with, with time. And we are really, truly a melting pot of women, as you could see. Huh? And uh, But uh, also, the, the, there's something very special. We put aside all our difference, you know, and we come together with one heart for peace, for human rights, for justice. And when, I, I believe when women come together with that heart, it creates such an amazing energy and empower one another. So this is very simple to explain. It's not so complicated, but it's very deep. And uh, so we can be sometimes 50 different nationalities in the home. It's like a mini United Nations. And the third are Muslim, third Christian, and third all other faiths or no faiths. So it's quite really truly interface. And uh, what happened in that meeting, I never planned anything except the speaker, really. It's really on the spirit of the moment. And so usually we listen to voice of women uh, talking about their country where there is conflict and to try to find somebody from there to share about their story which is very powerful to listen to somebody's story and also suffering and also we can listen also of women who are dealing with issues in society you know women issues family use integration like social racial you know religious integration and so we create awareness like that. And then afterwards, it's a time where we share with one another. And it's a very important time because that's a time when we can build friendship with each other and we can empower one another with goodness and keep our ideas alive by listening to each other. And also, you know, really we can feel the commonality of all faiths. We share the same joy and sadness and cycle of life. And that brings us very close to each other just by sharing our heart with one another and create a safe place where we can share deep things with one another. And it, it really is also teaches us to be humble that we can learn from each person or each faith, you know, and that God is everywhere. And then the last bit, we come together, we have a quiet time of meditation or prayer so people can read, read from their scripture, or uh, reciting a poem or sing a song, but it, it brings everything nicely together. And if there was any issues, you know, because sometimes we speak about peace, it can be sometimes challenging, you know, because there's so many different types of people there. And it, it requires sometimes a lot of forgiveness and compassion by being there, you know. And to, so this quiet time in the end is a time when you really feel God's presence. And we, or different peace in their heart. And then we have something to eat together and we socialize. And this aspect of building friendship is very important, I think, because it helps us to take away fear and prejudice towards another race, towards another religion, by making a friend. And through the eyes of a friend, we just, it's a communion of heart that we don't even see anymore. 
We don't put each other in box. We just feel a human heart, especially as women. Women is to carry a lot in their life. And, and then afterwards, we always try to do something practical. So we don't feel it's enough only to talk or to pray, but we need to do something. So many times after this meeting, we pass a donation box around and, and people move to give something. Or we had different projects that we've been doing helping all kinds of different situations with refugees and homeless people and also um, a lot of issues for women with forced marriage you know domestic violence trafficking gun crime many many really hot topic and then women are moved in their heart that they want to do something to help so that is something very i think very important you know and then from that peace group we had a wonderful project we built an orphanage in india for untouchable children and everybody mm -hmm. work together really like interface in action and we work hard you know church in our mosque and you know synagogue to bring money and to build that home and in fact david organized a youth project there in the beginning you know our wise project the young people build the foundation of the home so it was really nice to involve the young people the moms and then afterwards the moms sponsor children there and this project has been going for 15 years really and you now it's more self-sufficient but still we are helping the older children you know at university or, yeah so this is a long journey but i always feel you know with the help of god and the help of each other we could make it it's a collective of effort of women really working together and the consistency is very important and this aspect of compassion and love and forgiveness and uh, yeah involving more and more young people you know and uh, yeah anyway to try it also yeah. the practical aspect of it yeah. Your passion yeah. is lovely. It's very powerful inspiration. You yourself, Margaret, all of your great inspiration for me. You know, I, I, I consider myself to be extremely lucky if I'm even being, you know, able to serve in a similarly long journey to where you guys have. But yeah, before we wrap up the uh, today's program, would you guys like to give any specific message to the viewers, women, young adults? Some Margaret. Say that um, uh, salam alaikum and, and namaste and um, good evening. Uh, I, I feel that women, particularly, and, and young people should have hope. They should not give up because we are people just like them and we can work together. There are people who care for them, you know. And like Robin said, if you, you we think that we are one family under God, how can we not care for the people who are suffering? Young people, old people, women particularly, you know, we have to do something about it. The good news is maybe we'll be, our region is going to do something with Pakistan as well. So hopefully uh, we will have much more, you, we will have much more things to say to your viewers in the future that we are helping UPF Pakistan, yeah? I hope this will work very well. But yeah, also, I, I would say that it's not just Pakistan. We are really for the whole world. And why we do what we do is important. I think I have found out that the second the second um, thing is that one family under God, the second is living in service of others. I have found out that by living in service of others, I have given my life a meaning. You know, I'm living a meaningful life. So everybody can do it. It's not our property, you know. And we don't want to be, to be just praised. We want people to do it. If you just go and help a next door neighbor, and if you don't know someone because he's wearing a hijab, just go and say, why do you wear it? And how are you? Who are you? In England, we can do that also very much still, although Britain is one of the best, uh, I would say, uh, multicultural uh, um, organizers. Well, country but particularly in Birmingham and London <laughs> but um, I, I feel that I want to tell your viewers whoever they are listening a young person you can do something you can easily get up and help something I met a, a 11 or 12 year old Vietnamese girl who with another uh, 11 year old Vietnamese girl started doing young fashion to, and started teaching young younger people to do young fashion to make money to help you know, victims of something or other. It's wonderful. So therefore we have to give confidence 
And my, my mother, my father used to say particularly, Margaret, you can do whatever you want to do. You can become whatever you want to become. So if, if you get this kind of encouragement from parents, from your community, you will be able to do things. So please, I would say to the group, do not despair. There are problems. Do connect to us if you want, to Hina. But also do think that you can do something because we can. Absolutely. Together, the world will be a better place. Yeah, and try Definitely. to live in service of others and you'll be very happy, I'm sure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much for a beautiful message, uh, Margaret. God bless, thank you. Um, <laughs> Ma, um, Patricia and David, any message from you? And specifically, David, um, I would like to hear your comments uh, in, in, in regards to women empowerment. Any specific message? Uh, um... Well, I've obviously seen over the last uh, 27 years the value of women coming together. And uh, we feel that women have a unique role to play, uh, not necessarily in um, taking positions of responsibility, but certainly influencing, um, uh, you know, history has been dominated. The history of politics and power and war has been dominated by men. And we need to restore the balance things are out of balance so women are the key players in that in terms of bringing compassion forgiveness um, and uh, these kind of qualities into the equation and uh, influencing even influencing you know things at the, the highest level but i think that the thing is we need to do it together mm -hmm. we need to empower each other so the peace meeting uh, provides that platform and i think upf creates that platform where we can come together and make that influence because Sometimes by ourselves, we feel a little bit, uh, you know, it's not so easy. And especially we often hear so many negative forces at work in our world or the media tends to focus on the, the, the negative for understandable reasons because it you know, sells mm -hmm. newspapers and so on. But fundamentally, people are good. Mm -hmm. And we need to help, our, especially our young people, uh, keep their idealism alive, yeah. to dream big and really believe in people's goodness and and, yeah. and by coming together with like-minded people as we try to do in upf and the women's federation then that's what gives us the, yeah. the encouragement the strength the power to continue and to make a difference yeah and perhaps yeah, i can add something and how has uh, patricia been in, in our promoting uh, helping you supporting you in your role <laughs> i Yes. Yeah, I, I want to say something, Hina, um, just to finish. I think, um, yeah, women coming together really can generate so much energy and hope. But also, my experience is a lot of women don't have that confidence. So that's why by coming together, we can empower one another. And we have a wonderful project that we are doing for the Women Federation uh, nationally and locally is Young Women Speech Contest. And it's very, very inspiring to help young women to stand up and to speak, you know, to have the courage to speak. And it's a competition. And then the winner, you know, they get some pride, they can, can go to the parliament and share their speech, you know, or go to an uh, international European conference. And uh, so we are doing what it. What is locally. the age limit for this? Sorry. So the age is from 18 to 39. So it's quite a big spectrum. Oh. And this year, oh, maybe. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and but this year will be um, the unique, the unique role of women in peace building, and so we have already. If if anybody is very welcome, if they want to try, it's a really wonderful experience to build the confidence to think about their life, you know, and reflect about their life, and make wonderful friends with other young people. You know, it's really, really everybody who does it, even they don't win, it doesn't matter. But they really make that effort and they build up their confidence. And some they try again another year and they persevere. It's wonderful. So this is something I want to say. We have to help our young women to stand up, you yeah. know, for the future. Yeah. It's very important. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yes, Margaret. Yeah. About uh, Robin. Robin is uh, is an honorary woman. Uh, <laughs> he's surrounded by six women, mother, wife, and four children are women. So therefore, wow. and I am a woman working with him all the time. So uh, he is like the most woman conscious <laughs> person ever. 
because he <laughs> says to me sometimes, there are no women on the panel. What's going on? You know? <laughs> so it's really nice to have men like David and Robin, you know, because yeah. they are aware in their mind that women must take sure. the right position and to have exposure, you know. It's, well, it's nice. very good. Wow. Beautiful it's to see good. how you... <laughs> I'm not hearing you.